Hi food lovers, I am Marika. Join me as we open another chapter of the show where there is no greater love than the love for food, Kitchen Diaries. Today, I am preparing vegetable lumpia, sizzling beef, and the award-winning dessert, orange chocolate panna cotta. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my delicious recipes in no time. So now, let's get started. Our first dish is our sizzling beef. Now, what would be the ingredients for that? Firstly, mushroom, and then our garlic, and onions, as well as all-purpose flour, and three tablespoons of butter, and then our beef broth, as well as liquid seasoning or soy sauce. As I've said, liquid seasoning can be optional. We can have it for soy sauce if you don't have an available liquid seasoning at home. So you have a second option if you can use soy sauce or as well as liquid seasoning. Now, because we are going to make a sizzling beef. Now, I have already marinated our beef before because it usually takes an hour to do that. So what did I do? Um, the seasoning that I've done is, of course, soy sauce or if you have liquid seasoning, you can go ahead and do that. As well as one, one tablespoon of white sugar, one tablespoon of calamansi juice and a black pepper. So. Um, our beef has already been marinated for like half an hour, so we'll just go ahead and proceed to our sizzling sauce. Now we'll just have this in a low heat fire. Always remember to have it in a low heat fire. Now, so we'll just add three tablespoons of butter. Spurt here. And we have to wait till the butter is already melted. And then that would be the time for us to add our onions and garlic at the same time. So we'll just let the butter simmer there and wait for a couple of minutes. So we are going to need our wire whisk. Just continuously stirring the butter till it's already melted. And okay. So I think the butter is already melted. It usually takes a second. So we'll just go ahead and add our garlic. One cloves of garlic will be fine. If you like garlic much, you can go ahead and have that. Because you see, garlic smells really good. And I do recommend if you have two, three cloves of garlic, it'll be okay. Now, so we'll just go ahead and stir them with a wire whisk. Always use a wire whisk, remember, okay? Continuously stirring and add our white onions. There you go. Now, I've already added everything. We'll just continuously stir it till, because it's already melted, the butter is already melted. And I think, hmm, it smells really good. So, the next step is that continuously stirring it with our wire whisk, we are going to add three tablespoons, I'm sorry, yeah, three tablespoons of all purpose flour. So, we have our all purpose flour here. We'll just go ahead and add them there. Okay. So, just continuously stir. Usually because you've already added your flour, it would really like dry up the onions and garlic at the same time. But then, don't be afraid, it usually does that, so just continuously stir. Now, we'll go ahead and turn this off and we'll set them aside. So having set them aside, we'll add your water. So, three cups of water, don't forget. So I already have it here, three cups of water. and as well as your beef broth. So we'll add them at the same time. Mix them all together and place them back at a low heat fire. Now, there you go. So there, just continuously stir and then, you know. So we have to wait till it's already boiled and um, we can have soy sauce as well. And you know what, there's an option. 
If you want it to make it easier, you can have it cream of mushroom. Just dilute one tablespoon of cream of mushroom and one cup of water. And go, you can go ahead and add them to your sauce. But if you just want it with cream of mushroom, you can go ahead and do that as well. So what I did is that I maximized the time. So we'll just go ahead and continue to stir this one. And we'll add soy sauce to make it more tastier. And then we'll season them with your salt and black pepper. And then as your mushroom. Now we'll just go ahead and take this one. And a black pepper. There. Mm. I think it'll be easier. So now it's doing good. So we'll just continuously stir this one. See it's already boiled and there's already have a thickness thickness mixture on it. So we'll just continuously stir it. Now I've already finished making our seasoning sauce. Now the next step is that we will have our sizzling plate as well as our butter and the ingredients that would be our marinated beef. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to brush the butter into our sizzling plate. Of course to add flavor to the beef. So we'll just go ahead and brush this one. There. Then after doing that, we'll just add your oil, an olive oil. So you can have as many as you like. We're going to go ahead and continuously do this. Now, so everything's done, we'll go ahead and add your oil. So just don't put too much, okay? Three teaspoons of this, it'll be fine. Now, spread them around with your brush and then keep them in a low heat fire. There you go. There. So we'll just take a couple of seconds or minutes and um, it'll be fine. That will be the time for us to put our seasoning beef. Now, did you know that Memorial Day is a day that most beef is consumed? And it is the beefiest day of the year followed by Labor Day and the 4th of July, which are tied up for a second. Now, it usually takes time, so you can go ahead and just wait for a couple of minutes or so. You can go ahead and roam around at your kitchen, talk with someone or, you know, watch TV and just, you know, have fun. And usually cooking doesn't seem to like be boresome with people. It usually makes people make more fun. It makes them happy. Like, you know, you could feel alive, especially when you're cooking for someone special, then there's love in there. So you can go ahead and do that as well. Well, in my case, I think I have, I don't know, I don't know if I have a special someone. It'll be really good because they say that a way through a man's heart is through his stomach. And my dad said, it really, does it, it is correct. So cooking would be one of the goodest talents that you could have. Now, I think this is already done. We can go ahead and add your beef now. Okay, so just go ahead and add there. So we'll just wait till it's already brown and it'll be good for cooking. And then that will be the time for us to add our seasoning sauce. Now, we'll just wait for a couple of minutes Usually it takes time. So we'll just season there. You can go ahead and add butter to make it more tastier. We still have butters here, so we can just go ahead and add, add them on top of our seasoning beef. And you know, it will usually take time, but it will be fine. So we have to wait till it's golden brown. Now, remember that you don't have to overcook your beef because there's a tendency that it will, it will become dry and it will become tough. Now remember as well that you have to tenderize your beef before marinating them. So you have to marinate them for an hour and then after that, that it would be fine if you can go ahead and just cook them. So just wait till it's like five minutes or so till it's already cooked and we'll go ahead and add your seasoning sauce. Now our seasoning beef is already done. We'll just go ahead and clip the both sides. Now, always make sure that you have both clips clipped together because you see there's a tendency that it will cause such accidents. 
Now just to make sure that that won't happen, we have to make sure that we'll just secure them both with our clips. Now, so just secure them together and place them on a sizzling plate. Now voila! Our sizzling beef is done. And just don't go away because next is our vegetable lumpia for appetizer. Welcome back food lovers, now our sizzling beef is done, let's proceed to cooking our vegetable lumpia and um, right in front of me are the ingredients. Now firstly, our mungo sprouts. Do you know the most widely consumed sprout on our planet is the mung bean? Absolutely unique. It's fun to grow and lend themselves to great recipes. Now next is our garlic as well as for our onions and then of course our carrots. Carrots were first grown as a medicine, not a food. And also, wild rabbits do not eat carrots. Well, you have been watching too much Bugs Bunny. The next is our cabbage. And um, the health benefits from cabbage are innumerable. People who regularly consume large amounts of cabbage are found to be enjoying the low rate of colon cancer. And of course, lastly, our kamote. Now, did you know that sweet potatoes are roots? Consider to regular potatoes, which are tubers, which means underground stems, and they are a good source of fiber when eaten with the skin on. And of course, the seasoning. Now, to proceed, we'll just go ahead and just heat them in a low heat fire. And we'll go ahead and add your oil. So we'll just take a second to heat up and that would be the time for us to put our garlic and as well as our onions. Now as I said earlier, it's nice to like sing along and you know enjoy while cooking. Because you see when you enjoy your cooking, it, it doesn't make you like tired, it doesn't mean that it's boring. It's you know just have fun and just smile and just sing and just you know just be comfortable, that's it. Because you know you see cooking, it makes people more passionate in what they do and exactly I feel passionate when I cook so sometimes when I take a bath I, I sing or when I do cooking I sing as well well I have some like favorite songs of mine and um you know would you like to hear like a little sample I, I don't know <laughs> maybe you know you'd like one well it's just that when I cook I love to sing because it makes me feel comfortable it makes me feel happy and um it's just, it's nice because there's just like a positive like outcome when I do that. We'll just get back to cooking. I might forgot about everything. We'll go ahead and add your onions. I'll let them heat up for a while. Most people that eat onions are like Indians, that's why, I don't know, they love eating these things. And you know, you don't need to cook onions when you can eat, you can just go and eat them rare. So it's fine. We're going to add up your garlic at the same time. So I'll just saute everything together and wait till our garlic is golden brown. So we'll just, it will just take a second and that's it. See? Hmm. The garlic smells really good. So I'll just continuously stir that one. Saute and saute. You can go ahead and add another oil, just a little bit. Don't put too much, okay? Turn it in a second, your garlic will just turn golden brown and that would be the time for us to add up all the vegetable ingredients. Now you can go ahead and add like grounded beef together with your vegetable or you can just go ahead and just do the vegetables instead. 
Now, our garlic is already golden brown. We'll go ahead and just add all the vegetables together, okay? So first we our cabbage, as well as for the carrots. And, oh yeah. For our kamote, or our sweet potato, also cold. And for our mango sprouts. Of course, don't forget our seasoning. So we'll add up the soy sauce. This is for the seasoning, okay? As well as a pinch of And our black pepper. Now our vegetable lumpia is done. We'll just place them on a plate. Okay. And you can go ahead and prepare them for like family size or you can just go ahead and just or you know, apparently your choice. So the next step is that we are going to wrap our vegetable mixture into the lumpia wrapper. Now firstly, so we'll just have this one. And, okay. Place them here, roll them over. Then we'll clip them on both sides just to make sure that they are secure. Roll them all together. So we'll just have water so that it will stick the lumpia together. Now there. Now, so we'll just go ahead and do that again. So it just goes on so on and so on and everything again. It just that's just the only thing that you're gonna do. So just put the vegetable mix on the lumpia wrapper, just roll it over, clip them both on the sides, and just roll it over again. And that's it. I've already finished wrapping all the lumpia vegetables together. Now what I did is that I placed an oil in this skillet and we'll just, it'll just take a second. We'll just have to make sure that the oil is already heated up so that that would be the time for us to put our lumpia wrappers on the oil. So just, it'll just take a second. So just a little bit waiting and it'll be okay. You know, just walk around in your kitchen, have fun, or you can do your modeling stuff, or you know, just do anything crazy or whatever just to buy some time. Now, I think it's already ready. It's okay. We'll just go ahead and try if it's already hot. Well, I think it's already frying. So we'll just fry them, it'll just take a second. Just go ahead and do them in low heat fire because if some, um, sometimes if you like, you know, put them in a medium fire, there's a tendency that the oil will just, you know, splash it up. And just to avoid any accidents or something. So as I've said next time, you should always stay tuned to Kitchen Diary so that I can just give you a little sample of my crazy stuff, like a little bit of singing, or if you want, we can go ahead and do dancing or, you know, just come along and just have some fun it's just only here at kitchen diaries and I can you know do some crazy stuff for you if you'd like you can go ahead and make a request I can do that you know I'm a bit of a um, secret so I'll just go ahead and proceed to everything um just make sure that our lumpia doesn't look too brownish or stuff because we just don't want them to dry up too much now with the sauce you can go ahead and put like I've experimented before. I like put Caesar sauce on it and it's a bit okay. It usually depends upon the person if you'd like any sauces just to go with your lumpia. So it's, it's fine. You can go ahead and do that in just in ketchup or else in like sweet chili sauce. Or you can go ahead and just, you know, you can go ahead and do it with cheese. It depends upon really your choice. 
think that our lupia is already finished, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to place this one on a tissue paper. Now, the purpose of having our tissue paper is to absorb the excessive oil your lumpia produces. Now, to make sure, just to make sure that you won't overcook your lumpia, okay? Just go ahead and just put them on a low heat fire. I will just take a second to absorb all the excessive oil this produces. Now, that would be the time we'll just do, go ahead and just go ahead and do our plating. So, okay, I'll just go ahead and place this one here and transfer and we can go ahead and um, do your plating. You can have fun stuff here. You can go ahead and put smiley face or a heart or it's apparently your choice. Welcome back food lovers, our sizzling beef and vegetable lumpia is done. The next thing that we need to complete our meal is our dessert. In preparing our orange chocolate panna cotta, we need crushed almonds of course for our garnishing as well as for oranges. Two oranges it will be fine. As well as for two sachets of gelatin and then chocolate. And then of course one half cup of sugar, our all-purpose cream and evaporated milk. Now just to start off, we'll just go ahead and mix first the gelatin and then the evaporated milk. So I have here the evaporated milk. And then I'll just mix this one with our gelatin. So two sachets of gelatin will be fine. So we have to use a wire whisk. Just go ahead and stir. Now we'll just go ahead and leave this one, just set this aside for five minutes, and we'll go ahead and proceed on mixing our sugar and our all purpose cream. So we'll just go ahead and set this aside first. And to mix them both, we have to do them in a low heat fire. Now, so first is our sugar as well as for our all-purpose cream. So just mix them both. There we go. There, we'll just go ahead and we'll just go ahead and use our wire whisk. So just continuously stir until the sugar is already diluted or is already dissolved. So just continue stirring. Continue stirring. You can go ahead and stir and you can go ahead and dance at the same time. Or you know what, just buy you some time till the sugar is already finished dissolving. So it will just take a minute and that would be okay. So now when everything's done and there's already like most of the time is like five minutes for our mix, that would be the time for us to just go ahead and just turn this off and we'll mix them both all together. I'll just go ahead and check this one if our sugar is already finished, okay? Now I think the sugar is already dissolved. That would be the time for us to turn off the stove. Now we'll just go ahead and continuously stir this one. And um, we'll just go ahead and add the gelatin mixture. Just take it easy, just, you know, have some fun. There. After doing that, we'll turn again the stove on, just in a low heat fire, so we just don't overuse this one, okay? Because if there's too much heat, there's a tendency that the gelatin will already get hot, hard, and we don't want that to happen, okay? So we'll just continuously steering till there's already a bad moisture. That would be the time for us to take this off and transfer this one to a warm, good like ice cubes and stuff, so that. There's, it will cool down the gelatin mixture and we'll just get an added flavor, okay? I think it's already done. We'll just go ahead and place them on top of here so it will cool down the heat that it produces. 
So we can go ahead and just transfer this one here. Now I've already finished everything. I've placed it on a glass. It's, it will be fine if you can want it. You can go ahead and place it on like a wine glass or a goblet. It's really optional. And what I did is that I placed this on a glass and after a while I add an orange flavor. Because what I'm doing is orange chocolate panna cotta, so that's why I, add, I added an orange flavor together. Now I placed like chocolates on top. It's for the garnishing. If, if you want, it's an option. You can have like sprinkles, or like, yeah, I had chocolates, I had almonds, peanuts, it's still the same. Now you can also do like um, marshmallows, it's optional. You can go ahead and put that one and you know, you can go ahead and like put an umbrella into your designing and stuff. It's really optional, depends upon you. So what I did is that, yeah, so just slice half of it and um, just place this here. Now it's just like simple orange dessert for everybody. It's really good for like Christmas parties or I best recommend making orange chocolate panna cotta overnight. Example, when you're like, you know, when you're like having a party for the day, you can go ahead and just do them overnight just to make sure that it's because it's best um, served refrigerated and cold. So it's better that when you do this one, you have to do it like overnight or before the party. Now, do you know that um, orange panna cotta is actually an Italian dessert? It's a mixture of gelatin as well as fresh sugar, all-purpose cream, and um, yeah, all of those stuff. So, um, if you're wondering if chocolate causes or aggravates acne, well, this is a myth. So, enjoy pounds of them, but be careful. It might swell your teeth or can cause diabetes too. Possible solution? Just drink lots of water. That's it. I'm sure. I, I do that sometimes. I like to eat chocolate and you know, it really like gives you a bit of fat in the body, but just don't, don't, just don't stop. It's just part of it. It's really, really. I mean, chocolates are really nice and sweet. So we just wouldn't stop the person doing that. Now our dessert is finished. Now just to inform you a bit about um, orange chocolate panna cotta. It's really an, a made Italian dessert. It's just a mixture of all the gelatins, the all-purpose cream, as well as for the evaporated milk. Now, do you know that this dessert is an award-winning dessert during our ABE um, Chefs on Parade at Robinson's Isuilo? It was actually made by my classmate. It was like Charlene Anya. So just go ahead and say hi to her. She did really good. You see? She was the winner. Now, so there you have it, food lovers. You have your healthier vegetable lumpia, sizzling beef, and the delicious award-winning dessert, our orange chocolate panna cotta. I hope you had fun cooking with me, food lovers. Once again, I'm Marika. Join me again next time on a show where there is no greater love than the love for food. Kitchen Diaries, toodles!